You are listening to the Built to Grow podcast, delivering the knowledge in all things fitness business. We help gym owners win. Here are your hosts, Tim Lyons and Randy Angston. All right, welcome back to the Built to Grow podcast, episode 100. Sonny Scottsdale AZ joined today as always co-host the emperor of impact Randy Angston what's happening guy hey guy hey guy hey guy episode 100 this is a, a milestone for I guess the podcast community I guess this isn't uh, achieved it's by many podcasters yeah yeah I'm, I'm just glad to be in the seat still I know right we're still you guys are still listening <laughs> unbelievable Hopefully, y'all are getting some uh, some great uh, value out of the yep. show. That's our, our only mission, help you win. Uh, we would really appreciate a nice review. You guys have been doing them. I've been reading them. I'm posting them. I really, we, I mean, we love that. So, um, yeah, keep doing that. If you if you don't mind, share this podcast with people. We're not really, we don't have any sponsors, so we're just kind of. till the whiskey shows up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Bootstrapping this bad boy. A couple of announcements, big, big workshop coming up April 23rd and 24th here, Chandler, Arizona, the, the, the client lifecycle automation workshop. This is a uh, workshop number two for us. We did a really good one on, I don't know, this is in February. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the repeat event. So, um, you can check that out. What's the, what's the, uh, PF marketing solutions.com slash automation. That's right. Automation PF marketing solutions.com slash automation, uh, limited seats there. We did get a uh, the thumbs up for the bigger room because mm-hmm. we were kind of packed like sardines in the other one. So we've got a bigger room over at the Keep headquarters uh, so we can fit a few more people in. Don't wait, guys. Um, last time we raised the rates quite a bit. Yeah. And um, some people got shut out. So uh, whatever the price is, is going to be the lowest one. So if yeah. you wait, it goes up. We do have a, a little bonus for you guys, three months of uh, the ProFit GPS when you sign up okay until supplies last so go to that go to that website pfmarketingsolutions.com slash automation um, and if it's available you'll see it there uh, and join us join us for two days of just crushing your business yeah I'm, I'm really excited about this i mean obviously coming out of the last one we saw the impact we're working with the gym owners now hearing the results of you know what's happened since then um i know this next one's gonna be insane I mean, it based upon what it took to get, not what it took to get the people in there, but the the people that were in the last room. Mm-hmm. Now with them, their knowledge, their excitement, this this next one's going to fill up quick. It's going to fill up quick, and yeah, you're talking about some of the results. I mean, yeah, we were in our in our support call, 150 percent increase in bookings. Yeah, you know, and this is a guy who's been in business 10 years. Mm-hmm. He's like, dude. Three locations. Yeah, 150 percent increase in bookings, man. I, I can't believe it. And then we have other people um, uh, didn't. So this was a really cool one. Somebody did a trial. They didn't sign up for anything. The automation took over, nurtured them back in. Uh, one of the final emails was just come back in for a free 14 days. They came back in and purchased the membership. Uh, that would have never happened if yeah. if uh, the automation wasn't in place. So. Guys, this solves so many problems. Uh, you know, two people signed up yesterday for the workshop, and I and I called them both, and the the response was like, "Man, this solves so many problems in my business that this is a no brainer." Two days with you, Tim, and learning this stuff, I just need to be there. And so he's he signed up yesterday. Two of them. And that's it. It's it's a system that is going to change your business for the positive. For as long as you decide to use it, I mean, you know, you, you're going to build upon this. This is going to become part of the business and how it operates, the success, the wins, all of it. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. So. And before we even launched our last one, I, I put, the, I went out on record and I said, "This is going to be the best workshop we've ever done." Yep. And and yes, it is, and it's even going to be better the next one. It's going to be the same workshop, but we're going to do it again. So, uh, April 23rd, 24th. Don't miss this one, guys. This is a game changer for your business. We want you there. So. All right, so we got a cool uh, little uh, little episode today. Episode 100, we, went, we, we were thinking like, well, what would make it special? What would be a cool one? Uh, we we kind of took had, a lot of feedback on this one. Yeah, we asked, right? Yeah. Because, you know, in fact, to be honest with you guys, to, to full transparency, we've already recorded episode one. Yeah. We <laughs> yeah. already recorded one. We already have things to tell you. No, we recorded 101. We yeah. just skipped yeah. 100 because we didn't feel like 101 was as good as what we wanted to do today. Exactly. So today we want to give you the story. Um, you know, we want, 
you know, we talk and you and depending on when, when you've we begin to listen to us, you don't know, you know, you, don't, you probably don't know the whole story. Mm -hmm. And we want to give you that. We want to give you the whole story of how, how did we end up sitting here at this uh, badass Real nice. podcast table in this badass studio talking to you and your eardrums? How did we even get get here? So. We're going to take you back in a little... little uh, <laughs> take it back in time. Take it back in time a little bit. So I just want to give you guys a story. This is all written in the book, guys. P um, TimLionsBook.com. Most of this is. I'll, I can elaborate a lot more on this show. Uh, but I'm going to give you the journey. How did we get here? So, so let's, let's take it back. Um, many of you guys know that I went to college and played college football. And at that school... Uh, my mission was I wanted to be a civil engineer. Okay, so so going to school, I was, you know, that's the way my brain, that's the way your brain works, actually, too. Mm -hmm. very, very I was going to go to school to be an engineer. Yeah, very logic based. Uh, and, and I went to the school. I actually got a scholarship to play there. So when I went there, I was like, I wanted to see the engineering program. Like, let's talk, let's talk the engineering. But they don't have one. They didn't have an engineering program <laughs> at the time. They had a uh, in the school of business. They had a construction management, and that was actually they're very well known. University of Louisiana Monroe, they have a really good construction program. Uh, they're the second accredited one, I guess, behind Florida or whatever the Gators. And, you know, they became, you know, they're neck and neck on how many graduates get these massive jobs. And so I went and played ball there and I got a, a, a great degree in the construction management world. And, and I had five offers right out of college. And, that, and again, today, that's not the norm. Yeah, nope. <laughs> I, there, there was a really cool... Um, event in dallas and i got to tell the story too because this, this, this <laughs> is actually this is actually really cool um a cool event in dallas where you would submit your resume and there would be like 50 construction companies and they would review all the resumes and then they would schedule you to go to their booth at specific times mm -hmm. and do interviews um so this was in dallas and it was not that far from where i was in louisiana so i drove over there and there was a, a, a girl that was a, a good friend of mine she let me stay there with a couple of the other guys and uh, her friend uh, worked at a strip club. <laughs> oh, okay. She's like, hey, do you want to go to a strip club and see my friend's strip? Uh, yeah, <laughs> let's do it. And uh, she goes, well, this this particular strip club is um, actually owned by some rock band. I don't know the name of it. Oh, and I yeah. was like, really? What? I love heavy metal. You know me. I mean, listen to our intro, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, Michael in uh, Australia, uh, one of our past clients, yep. he, he sent me a DM the other day. He's like, man, I didn't know you love metal so much. And he was just blasting all these metal. He's <laughs> like, do you like this guy? All right. So anyways, we go to Dallas. She's like, hey, we're going to go see my friend perform. I don't know. Dance. 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 Uh, but this place is a, it's owned by a, a rock band. I don't know the name. I'll find out the name. And uh, it's like you bring your own beer in. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to. So so what do you mean? You, you, bring, you bring your own alcohol into this bar? Yeah. Yeah. You buy the ice though. The ice is like twenty bucks. Yeah, or like a corking fee, or yeah, yes. based upon what you bring in. So yep. probably never been to one. Probably something, <laughs> something to do with the uh, the liquor laws or yeah. something. Anyways, got the case of beer. A couple of the boys, uh, my 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 girlfriend was there. It was not my girlfriend, but a friend that was a girl. And we, she's like, hey, meet my friend, blah blah blah. And I was like, hey, so I was talking to the friend who was naked <laughs> i was like hey. and a strip club <laughs> and she's sitting down next to us and we're just talking like nothing's going on but i'm like yeah at it. whatever anyways uh i digress and <laughs> i'm like who's the rock band that owns this place she goes oh have you ever heard of pantera i was like uh oh. <laughs> what <laughs> pantera Tim oh shaking. my god this is pantera pantera's you know and for you guys that don't know me like pantera it was my jam mm-hmm in fact, in the locker rooms, uh, I would put Pantera on, and all the the brothers, all the black guys, and the I mean, they listen to the the gangster rap, and they threw I throw the Pantera in, and they're like, "Lions, man, this this is good." I You're see bringing you, this. You know, <laughs> and they start you know they start head banging and stuff with me in the in the, in the locker room and stuff, and so that was my. You know, my pump up songs, you know, and we still listen to it before the podcast every once in a mm -hmm. while. By the way, um, it it's not possible for us to put that in the intro without a very hefty sponsor. So, oh, that's right. When <laughs> we, we were we, we were looking to make walk. Yeah. Part Pantera of walk yeah. was going to be our entrance uh, or our intro song. And I called <laughs> Time Warner, <laughs> yeah, Time Warner. Talking, and yeah. I talked to the executive at Time Warner, asked them if we could use yeah, Pantera. What it would take. And they gave us a quote, and mm -hmm. they had to get it approved by the, the band. band, and it was like twelve hundred dollars an episode. Was, I thought it was it was like two. It, well, it was something it, like that. It was yeah. It was going to be a hundred thousand dollars for us to to use their song in the first year that, through a hundred episodes, and and it would expire. Yeah. And you had to renew it. <laughs> so 
we went some royalty free intro music close <laughs> but pantera. so I'm in, I'm in this club i'm like dude is anybody from pantera here yes there is vinnie <laughs> paul vinnie paul the drummer was in the booth with the girls <laughs> i was like i've got to go and talk to vinnie paul right vinnie absolutely paul, vinnie paul's the drummer for pantera who actually passed he away passed. a couple years yeah. ago and his brother was dying back Darrow, which was the legendary uh, guitar player for the band. And he got actually assassinated on stage at an event. Somebody shot dying back Darrow, uh, the guitar player, because they said that dying back Darrow was the reason the band, the broke. band broke up. So anyways, and we're going, you know, just <laughs> this listen, is the story. <laughs> listen, listen along, listen along. I, th okay. So I, I'm going, I go into the booth and he's like, Hey, I was like, Hey man, big fan. I really love it. You know, just want to introduce myself. He's like, have a seat boy. You know, and I was like, cool. <laughs> I'm drinking with Vinnie Paul and a couple of the girls and we're just having a good old time. And he bought me some beers or whatever. And, um, this, this kind of raggedy looking group comes up to the, to the table and they're like, Hey, you know, you know, it was, it was I guess, I don't know. Any of the old timers know who Leif Garrett was. He was like, this, Oh yeah. He was like the Justin Bieber of like the seventies and eighties. It was him. I don't know who he is. <laughs> he introduced himself to me and Vinnie Paul and they sat down with us and I'm in the middle of this, like, you know, out of, out of your normal I'm, room I'm, I'm, <laughs> here. I'm a, I'm a 21 year old, you know, college kid or whatever mm -hmm. and hanging out with these bands um crazy story met the guys i exited that gracefully let them hang out and i went back and you know we ended the night we went home and whatever and i did my interviews um i ended up getting like four or five job but yeah five job offers out of that one event literally the next weekend back in monroe louisiana we're going to a bar there as you do when you're in college you go to bars <laughs> yeah and Leif Garrett was playing hit with his band at the, it was called the the Blue Monkey. It was the name <laughs> of the bar in Louisiana. And I didn't know I didn't put two and two together. I didn't know Leif Garrett was the guy I just met the weekend before in Dallas at the strip club with Dimebag sure. or with uh Vinnie Paul. And um I see him, he sees me, he's on the mic, he goes, That's that's uh Pantera's uh security <laughs> right there. And so we ended up partying with those guys all night. <laughs> And uh, hung out with them. Anyways, um, this is where the story takes a weird turn. If that's not weird enough, I ended up taking the job that I got the offer to take me out to California, Newport Beach, California. You, we go. Oh there, yes, we go there every summer. The noops. And um, I'm dating a girl out there. Her name was Brandy, and I'm like, we went. There's this Hard Rock Cafe out there in uh, Fashion Island, and, and I, don't, I doubt it's still there. But we're eating dinner, and there's a band setting up. And I asked the waitress, "Who's who's playing tonight?" Uh, some guy named Leif Garrett. So, <laughs> you you, gotta, you be gotta be kidding. You gotta be shitting me, <laughs> Leif Garrett. I know that guy. And Brand Brandy, the girl uh, I was dating at the time, she's like, "You know him?" I was like, "Yeah, you know. yeah." We go way back. This is how know. I do it. You don't know. <laughs> so I find Leif Garrett, and he's like, "Dude, you're drinking on me all night, brother." You know, like it was like a, it was a shit show. <laughs> but I'm in Louisiana. I'm working construction. Okay. And at the time, this this has to be oh four three four five uh, in, in Newport Beach. So we're on the uptick of the housing market. That you know, there's still some houses affordable, but when you know, I was in construction, I was building homes, and you know, you would see the market going up. Like so, we would do phases out there, and so maybe it would be six hundred thousand dollars a house phase one. But by the time phase two was done, that first house was seven hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. So investors are jumping into these projects like crazy, and they're making hundreds of thousands of dollars in a matter of months. And I'm like, I'm getting priced out of this market. I can't live here anymore. Um, so, Aaron, who is yeah my wife now, she um. She, w I had a conversation with her. I was like, hey, I need it. We need to buy something, but we can't buy it here. Let's buy it in Arizona. So I, got, I borrowed money from her mm -hmm. and I put money down on a house in Arizona. Uh, literally, I was an investor, so I wasn't ever planning on moving on it, in on it, but I needed to make some money. So we we bought the home. By the time it closed, it had made it was like another 50 or 60 thousand dollars. And I ended up selling it to a friend of mine like a double closing so at the closing mm -hmm. i closed on it the loan and then i handed, turned around <laughs> handed and some paperwork and to I someone closed else it on, double <laughs> yeah. close so i ended up getting it like a fifty thousand dollar check i was like oh my god this is so easy <laughs> yeah. i just made fifty thousand uh, dollars one thing to note guys if you're listening to the story this, this is like the risks you take as an entrepreneur you see an opportunity and you do it so i didn't have money i got it from aaron put it on the house 
made the 50 grand. I gave her the 10 grand back or 15 that she gave me. We split the profits, you know, and then I paid off all my debt. I bought her a ring. We got married. We moved to Arizona after that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're, I'm out in this little podunk town working construction in a place called Maricopa. And in Maricopa, there's nothing going on, and, but there's one gym there. There's a gym, uh, never heard of it, called Anytime Fitness. I never heard of it, okay? And this has to be 06 by now. So we're now in 06. And I get to, I get to working out, because obviously being in, in who I am, this is our part of our lifestyle. Sure. We'll go and work out. So I find the one gym that's in my town. It's 24-hour fit or um, Anytime Fitness. can go in 24 hours a day. Went in there and started getting to, to understand the lay of the business. And... I met the owner, a guy named Brian Mullins. Brian, if you're listening, man, thank you for, for showing me the ropes because he, he would take me in his office and show me kind of what's going on in the gym. And I was like, man, this is pretty simple. Brian, you're never here. Right. He's actually a police officer. He's like, hey, man, you know, this is this is great. He had 1,500 members paying like 49 bucks a month and no training, nothing. Mm -hmm. he, he, and it was just basically the old Anytime Fitness model, which was, you know, rent the equipment. Yeah. It was a convenience model. Yeah. And I would go in and lift all the time. Uh, long story short, I get to know the business really well. I'm like, man, anybody can do this, dude. Anybody can do this. So I start looking at Anytime Fitness as, as going to be like, that's what I'm going to yeah. do. I'm going to open on Anytime Fitness, man. This is amazing. I'm still working construction. I ended up changing companies and, and working these massive, like, big commercial projects. So I was like, getting out of housing. I went into a commercial, um, which was cool. Uh, and I, I ended up going and finding a book. So my dad, you know, Tim yep. Senior, oh, yeah. he's like, you got to go find books and read about owning a business. So I found a book by Thomas Plummer. Okay. I think it was making money in the fitness business, or I think it's one of his first it was green cover. I don't remember the name of it. And I read the book and I hear that Thomas is going to be at, uh, an URSA convention in San Diego. So me and my dad drive out, um, we go and meet mm -hmm. Thomas and I'm serious at this point. I'm ready to open a gym. And um, I hire Thomas, his company, to be my consultant. And he gave me a guy named Roger Sargent. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to say his name, but Roger was my consultant. So I hired him for a fee, and Roger flew out from, I think it was from the East Coast, and we went looking for locations, and we did some demographic data research. And all of a sudden, we found two locations, ended up settling on one of them. Mm -hmm. I had already reached out to Anytime Fitness, and at the time, um, there was an investment group that owned the territory rights in Arizona. And I said, I really want to open up Anytime Fitness. Like, how do we do this? What's the process? What, you know, how much money does it take? And all this stuff, very green. Uh, sorry, Tim, we can't let you open an Anytime Fitness because the, there's an investment group that th all the rights of the, the entire state go to these guys. So, unfortunately, Damn sorry. it, Mike. No. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Elf got No, it wasn't no. Mike. It wasn't <laughs> yeah. Mike. It Could was you a, imagine? It was, it was another group. So I said, you know what? I'm still going to open a gym anyway, and I'm just going to open Pulse Fitness. Uh, and by the way, when you name your business for the first time, you lay out 50 names, and you go to your friends and family. And <laughs> which, no, no, you ask them, like, which one resonates with you the most? And we settled in on Pulse, and I got the logo made, and I got the website made, and we signed our lease for, I think, f a five-year or six-year deal mm -hmm. in the first location. And Pulse Fitness was starting to get built. And because I was in construction, I had all the connections. I had all the contractors at my disposal. I had the architect at my disposal. Anybody you want, everything was half price, you know, sure. for me. Yeah. You know. So I was building this thing. And um, uh, a step back from, from that, I actually had to make a business plan. I was like, mm -hmm. how am I going to get money to build this thing? How, yeah, how do people, so where do you find investors? I, I lean on my dad. I'm like, Dad, what's the process on you getting, you know, how do you open a business? He owned a business at mm -hmm. the time, and um, he's like, you need to go and, and go to the bank and, and apply for a, you know, a loan. But you need to have a business plan. So I, you know, I, I struggled over doing a business plan for, for weeks. I, I, I would, would go to Brian and meet with him and, like, you know, try to understand the numbers and everything. And I created, one day, um, I remember... I was just d just decided to go to a Starbucks and in a Starbucks I shut I had my headphones on and I literally did the entire business plan in four hours at like with a giant coffee and just <laughs> you never see like those uh, those and like those movies where the person's standing still and everything's moving around him real fast but yeah so it's like limitless no you know what it's like is um Oh, yeah, yeah. I know the scene you're talking about. Uh, at the casino. The hangover. The hangover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all the numbers are going <laughs> yeah. off. And, uh, what's, when, he's, he's, when, uh, what's his Zach, name? He's like having his Rain Man moment, right? Yeah. yeah. He's counting the cars. All the numbers are happening. And I'm yeah. doing that. And I'm just pounding <laughs> You're, you're in the, the flow state, right? He was in the flow. Yeah. And four hours from start to finish, had the entire business plan. I set a meeting with, with the bank. 
uh, I put a suit and tie on. I walked in. They said, "Yeah, we can give you 15 minutes. Well, you know, just tell us what you know what you sure. what your business is all about." Uh, so I had a 15 minute meeting. I went in there with Aaron, and in, in two and a half hours later, we walked out with a loan. Boom. We got f- we got funded for this project for for the for the first gym, and it was awesome. I'm like, dude, I'm the, I'm a stud here. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I had no clue. Sure. I had no clue. What what was on that business plan it, it is nothing like what it is today. Absolutely nothing. But that that's where this that's where this is like that's why this story is important. Sure. I got the loan. I got you know we started building. I got the equipment. I used my consultant Roger. He, we filled the whole place up full of equipment. You couldn't even move in this place. There was so much equipment. Uh, and we're we're sitting in a thirty one hundred square foot uh, facility. We wanted it to be an anytime fitness. They said no. We turned. We did our own pulse fitness and it was going to be a gym that you used and we had training there if you wanted it and mm-hmm. we used independent trainers so i went to all like i was i guess i was connected back then i don't i don't know <laughs> the, i don't know these guys anymore yeah the networking but all the best trainers the independent trainers in the area i brought them into yeah. pulse you remember i was there oh yeah you remember them and they brought all their clientele with them which was super cool <clears> like <throat> overnight like but well i won't I'll, I'll tell you that here in a second uh, we, we got the gym off the ground in about two weeks uh, before the grand opening. I lost my job at yeah. a construction company. And this whole thing was I was going to be like Brian Mullins and have a job. And this thing was just going to run itself. And like, oh, yeah, rent the equipment. Yeah, it's turnkey all. cash, right? Turn, yeah, just print, <laughs> printing cash. That's, that was the goal. That was the goal. And, um, you know, I opened the business with no job, no money. And, I, you know, everything was uh, on loans and credit cards. And I borrowed some from my parents. Um, I had to. I didn't have any. So I opened the business and had no job, no income. So Aaron was, was working at the bank with uh, <coughs> a different bank. But she was, she was providing for the family, right? Yeah. No kids back then. It was really simple. So we have this model where we're going to open this gym. We've got it's going to be a 24 hour key access facility with training. <clears throat> but training was going to go through the independent trainers. And we got into the business. We opened the doors. Grand opening was um, October. No, a- August 26, 2009. You see the pictures. It's in some it's of our hang, webinars. Hanging in our office. Yeah, here, we got yeah. the pictures of the grand opening in here. And um, <laughs> what it, for those of you flying in for the CLA, the photo is worth it. <laughs> <laughs> just come out for the, the, the build out. Yeah, just check yeah. out the photo. And like, who is that guy? <clears throat> Who's this baby faced little guy up here? That was yeah. This is what this is what, <laughs> gym, this is what gym ownership does to you, right? Uh, quickly ages you like the president, right? The president of the United States. You ever do see the you see the before marks? and afters? They're insane. A lot of stress. Yeah, stress. stress. Well, it's, I'm, I imagine that there probably isn't a job in the world that carries. I saw a comedian some of that level say of this once. It was actually Brian Regan. A, I like Brian Regan. He goes. Who in their right mind would want to be president of the United States? Exactly. Every morning you wake up, somebody's like, Mr. President, Mr. President, hey, wake up. Problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah. Problem. Half of the world's Problem. trying to kill you right now. Problem. How do you feel? Wake up. Problems. Like, what? So you wake up to problems every day. And that was the way the gym was. I'd wake up. I had no clue what was going to hit me that day. Uh, you know, the the good and the bad was I had all these independent trainers. We, we had like a $29, $39 membership. And that was about the time... You joined the gym. Yeah, yeah, it was three months after you guys kick, kicked the doors open that yeah, I, uh, and we, I came and in. We scaled so fast. Within a couple of months, we were close to 300 members, close to. Probably by the end of the yeah. uh, 18 months, we had about 350 members in there. And it was, you know, a pretty rocking place. I mean, to be honest with you, it was always busy. It, it was, was always busy. But, you know, at any $29, $39 gym, you're going to have people all the time mm-hmm. in there. And so... What was interesting was we had these five different independent trainers training their own co- their own clients completely differently, and uh, like couldn't be further. So we had uh, I remember these guys. I had uh, Todd. Todd was doing CrossFit stuff. Rob was a bodybuilding guy. Oh yeah. Um, Kathy was doing like um, band work with groups. Like a lot of older clients, sixty seven year old clients doing bands. Uh, April was doing bikini model yep. stuff. Uh, James was in there doing the executives. He had all these really rich executives in there training one-on-one. So there was all these one-on-one uh, client coaches except for Todd was doing groups and Kathy, Kathy was doing mm-hmm. groups. And I thought it was pretty cool because everybody was making money, but actually I wasn't making any money. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, man, all these people are in here, but these coaches were the ones making money. 
big money and they were like bragging about the money they would come into my office man 10 grand for this this client just renew baby you know get a new car <laughs> getting the hummer you oh know? yeah and i'm like dude this guy is making all this money and i have all the risk i'm here with the risk my i had a I had to do a personal guarantee at the time yep. you know when you're opening your first business you got to personally guarantee the lease the loan everything it was on my name. Mm -hmm. And so if I went under, they can go go after you personally, go after mm -hmm. my house, take yeah. my house away, my car, whatever, my truck. So you all come walking in and you were there training with, I think your girlfriend at the time. Yeah. Deanna, Deanna was, was there. Yeah. yeah. Deanna was in there always mm -hmm. training. You guys were there probably as much as I was. <laughs> I mean, I would, there wouldn't be a day I wouldn't see. Oh yeah. Randy and I mean, Deanna. that was, that was the beginning of like, you know, they kind of our friendship blossomed from yeah. there. I mean, we met each other through just to kind of like, start that process i mean I'm, we met through mario mutual friend from uh one of yeah. those bar scenes long yeah. long 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 ago um yeah but just you know another fitness guy got us in the mix uh introduced us and then yep. you kind of got on me like hey you gotta check out the place and yes. we were we were at another gym at the time and paying again probably the same yeah something near nothing yep um i could i can tell you that i paid 39 dollars a month for your memberships okay so because <laughs> You would get billed. Well, I <laughs> would get billed. And then the funny thing is we would do trade work. You know what I mean? That's, That's right. kind of how we got into the mix of, of doing some of this stuff. So I never knew, you know, was is this bill covered? Is this that one not? Like we just had a very, yeah. you know, open. casual, yeah. open conversation. So, but I did know it was $39 because if I didn't have something that I worked on, ASF was calling me <laughs> trying to find <laughs> trying to find my membership. ABC. Money. Or ABC back then. Yeah, it was ABC Financial. Yeah. So, so, so I <clears> met you, Randy, and really – you know, you got, I got to know you and it was all about, you know, you did graphic design, mm -hmm. you did some, some cool stuff. So I, every time I had a flyer or something like, Hey, can you build this thing? And you would just go and bang it mm -hmm. out and like, here you go. But, but, but just to talk to that, a lot of the, cause it reminds me of the relationship that you had with Brian to, to some degree, like right. you would go into the office and just kind of shoot the shit, figure yep. out, you know, hear the lay of the land. That's how I came to know the inner workings of the, fi the fitness true. business. Right is you know Deanna and I at the time <clears throat> we bartended part-time we're you know we had some other income coming in but very time freedom-ish you know what I mean so our, our days we'd spend hours in the gym yeah and uh so I'd finish up and I'd come in you and I would shoot the shit and we'd talk about the business we'd talk about the changes that were happening uh -huh. the things that you, you <laughs> I remember those days with the new cars rolling up and everybody else is like wow because uh, my money was going to those trainers too sure deanna was training with rob at the time yeah and uh you know seeing how that all transpired was the beginning of you understanding, know yeah. understanding the the dynamics of the gym the uh, how you can kind of create your lay of the land if you may you know and then nowadays where we sit obviously we can get into that but right so you yeah so i i was share i would always share like the trials and triumphs mm -hmm. of, of what, what you were was working happening. on what was working what wasn't yeah, what the goals and, are type of thing yeah and um you know and that was the early days i, I was i bought infusion soft i was mm -hmm. learning that and the email marketing stuff that was again oh nine we're, t we're taking it way back 2009 where were you in 2009 listeners where were you <laughs> that's this is what we were doing we we're in the office doing uh, Infusionsoft campaigns and uh, doing graphic designs for flyers. For direct mail. Direct mail flyers. You know, or even take it one step further. How about stacking boxes for the, the post office? That's right. Full of direct mailers so, so that we can drop them off. And So there was this big push for um, the, the post office was, you know, in shambles and losing money. And they came up with this every door direct mail program. And I jumped on board early because I can go and basically – what I did was I, I mapped all of our clients' addresses on a map, and I looked at the neighborhoods they were in, and then I overlaid the, the postal carrier routes, and I went to the post office every door direct mail, and we said, okay, we're going to hit this postal carrier route, this one, this one, this one, this one. We would just kind of flood the, the neighborhoods of where our clients were with flyers that you designed. And then what we ha what you had to do at the time, you had to go to the post office, get those big bins mm -hmm. and these big rubber bands. And you had to print out basically the carrier route, all the information uh, and how many you were sending. And then you had to bundle up these like packages and you had to go bring them to the post yeah, office. Yeah, you basically had to bring it ready for them to go deliver, like to segment to the delivery guys yep. from there. Yep. Very, and I think they still do that, but we would <clears> do that and we would like wait for the phone to ring and maybe like one person. Would or come yeah, or somebody come in with a flyer type of thing. Yeah, like, we were like, oh man, dude, we got one. <laughs> out, <laughs> yeah. of the, out of the 10,000, we got one? Yes. <laughs> well, and I got to, you know, the business became to, 
to a kind of a head. It was like, okay, I was very forward thinking. And I was like, you know what? The way we're scaling right now, we ain't going to make it. There's only this much money left in the bank. My lease or whatever is going to go to full price full, after yeah. this month. Cause you get like some abatement early on. Like it was a six month abatement in like, okay, by month 10, we're out of money. We're out of money in month 10. And this is six months into the, you know, granted brand new equipment, top of the line stuff, pre-core free motion hammer strength all that stuff i don't know if we had hammer strength, but we had a lot of free motion stuff uh and pre-core or whatever and um you know i'm like uh this isn't good so i kept asking aaron for for extra sure. cash we gotta hey we gotta we gotta <coughs> cover we gotta cover the expenses so she would basically she was working a job to pay to have the gym open and, and, we and uh, guys a lot of you are in this situation today this sure. is a very common situation even today Yes. Yeah. So you, you look as a business owner, you're always looking at the bank account. You're always looking at the bills coming up. You're, you, I, you're always looking at the billing, like who your clients and when those drops and how much those drops, those deposits are going to be. And like, am I going to have enough money? So I was thinking, okay, man, we got about four months. If we don't change something, something's going to like hit, hit the wall. So I went back to Thomas because I was doing calls. I'm like, hey, man, this is a situation we're in. He's like, man, you got you to gotta meet this guy, Rick Mayo, man. He's, uh, he's doing some good things in Atlanta. You might, you might just call him and just offer him to buy you know, a couple days of his time. Just offer it. I don't know if he'll charge you to him, but you know, sure. offer it anyway just to you – know, because he wasn't really doing consulting. He had his uh, North Point <coughs> personal training, and I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's go. I'm going to call him. So I call him. He, we agree. Uh, I'm going to fly out. I brought uh, Todd, and your Todd wife. Aaron, and myself, and we flew out there, and we basically opened up the doors to us to show us everything. He sat, I sat down with his uh, fitness director, Joe, and Todd would, would, would talk, and then me and Rick would walk around the gym. We went to lunch. We went to dinner, and I remember this very specifically. Uh, we went to dinner the first night, and I was like, hey, Rick, you know, here's our gym. This is what we're doing. Um, he's like, go ahead and take this napkin out. And we drew out like on the napkin. Everybody's like, hey, the, the best business plans are always done on, on, on a napkin. This, this, this is exactly, <laughs> exactly what happened. And like, here's, here's what we got. Over in this corner, we got this, uh, this leg press, and we got this uh, fly machine and all these treadmills over here. And this is like a Smith machine over here and a hack squat over here. And this was, again, this was the consultant telling mm -hmm. me how to, how to build the space out. And plus, I was – loving it because i loved all that equipment. yeah it, it's it, it fit what we were trying to do yeah, too the bodybuilding yeah. right and uh and so <clears throat> i i draw it out for rick i'm like hey rick here's what we're doing um you know here's our numbers and all this stuff and he's like all right here's what i would do man um he took a, a red marker he i don't know <laughs> i guess he knew because he had a red marker in his pocket <laughs> i guess he knew this was coming he pulls the red marker and he starts crossing off all this brand new equipment again six months old six months old equipment he's, he's i'm like and we were left with the dual cable crossover crossover yeah. and another cable machine and some dumbbells. That's it. And he told me this, he goes, he goes, he goes, space is the best piece of equipment you can have in this model. If you're looking to change this from a gym, like a general access, like say anytime fitness general access gym to a training gym, you got to get rid of all this stuff. I go, I go, the clients are going to leave. He goes, the clients will leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but in order to get the better clients, you need to get rid of these clients because these clients aren't going to buy your training. Correct. They're not buying. They're not there now. for it. Yeah. Yeah. They're there to just have convenience. And I said, okay, we got to make a change. Uh, obviously, in this this is a conversation we have with a lot, a lot of our clients now. He goes, what I'm th like Jeff Laris, for example. He goes, if what I'm doing is not working. Yep. And he had and he had to like have the gusto to say or not be so hard headed to say. I'm going to, even though this isn't working, I'm going to make it work. Mm -hmm. He's like, this isn't working. I need to make a change. And so overnight, we decided we're going to change this whole model out overnight. We got rid of all this equipment. I sold it. I traded it. I put it in storage. Storage, I know. And, I, you know, and we made this big presentation to the gym. We did letters. We did emails. We did, um, you know, everything we could to communicate the direction of the gym was changing. And it was like pitchforks and like they're <laughs> like you know picketing out in front of my clients were pissed mm -hmm. like, this isn't what i sent up for i'm like i'm sorry 
this is the business and we're not going to make it. So it's either we change or it's going to close. Or you don't have anywhere to train anyway. So it doesn't matter, right? You know, you get to those points where you just have to make the decision. And a lot of our clients that we work with today are stuck, right? Yeah, I think it's a lot of fear, you know? Like you knew that everybody's leaving. Like what do I, I I can't start over again. Well, yeah, actually you do. Because the path you're on is never going to be the path Mm -hmm. you wanted it to be. Yep. You need to make that change. And so we gave everybody free month of, oh, and by the way, this is about the time I started hiring trainers. I, mm-hmm. hired, I hired Sarah mm-hmm. and Chris and, and these coaches. And so instead of signing people up and giving them to the independent trainers, I was signing them up and giving to my trainers. In-house trainers. In-house yep. trainers. And, our, and the independent trainers got upset. Naturally. Naturally. They, they weren't, I mean, they, they were high on the hog. They were getting fed. They were, yeah, yes. I was, I, was, <laughs> I would meet with somebody, and then I would get with the coach. I'm like, hey, this coach would probably be the best fit for you. I would introduce them, and then they would go with sell that, that, that client that I just signed up for them, $5,000, $10,000 packages, and then they were buying new cars, and I'm sitting here like, oh, I got the 39 You got $39 a month. Mm-hmm. So that being said, obviously that was the stupidest thing I ever did early, but – we made a change overnight and I basically told all the independent trainers that I'm not feeding you anymore. I've got my own team and you can either leave or, you know, stay and market yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it should have been in the beginning. I just didn't know any better. And they got mad. A couple of them left early and then a lot of them hung on for a Mm -hmm. while. They're like, man, I'm making too much money here. Um, I got a great, great gig. I think they're paying me 500 bucks a month to be there and they're making 20,000 a month. Right. Basically what was happening. So why would they leave? Uh, and then eventually I just said, time's up. I've got, you guys got to get out of here by the end of next month. And, and basically I kicked everybody out, all the coaches, the independent coaches. And I had my team. Mm-hmm. So I had Todd, uh, who, oh, by the way, Todd was an independent trainer. Correct. And I hired him on. To brought him in-house. Yep. Yeah. And that was <clears throat> one of the best moves we did because he saw what I was doing. He wanted to come along for the ride. And he was a very veteran coach already uh, he was like he, he was your first zach in a way yeah you know what i mean like that he he stepped up into a, a fitness director role yep. you know through through the fact that you were able to bring him on board he saw the bigger picture not just the client in front of him for the one hour yeah and Very, that's where that that crossover started exactly and i was you know and i brought him into the meetings with you and we had these these great conversations but think about all the massive changes all within the first year like think about that guys i mean there's you know you have this vision it doesn't work. I sell basically. I still owed on that equipment for like three years, mm-hmm. and it was sitting in storage, or I sold. Or it was it already right. gone. Yeah, it's already gone. But I'm still making still those payments. It. Yep. yep, it's what you had to do. So uh, I brought Todd on board, and that's when we flew to Atlanta, and and we did all this stuff together, and we made this massive switch to a training gym versus a gym with training. So, one thing to mention there too, though, you did have the only for the sake of conversation, um, you kept the ability to still train in the gym. But even then, this is your first time where you switched over to, it's not a $39, mm-hmm. you know, show up whenever you want type of thing. It's 99 or $97. You can come and train on your own, but we're going to do the design. We're going to do the programming for you. Right. And that's the beginning of where that kind of path started. Correct. So everybody coming through the door, the brand was controlling that experience at big that time. point. Yep. And so that was a big pivot. And we learned early, right? We mm-hmm. learned, we failed early and we, uh, that's the other thing go fast so you can fail as quick as possible because most likely the thing you come out of the gate with isn't going to be the right thing and it obviously wasn't for us and you know with todd and myself and sarah and chris we were we were doing damn good so we we went to 350 members and we quickly went down to like 150 members Mm -hmm. just just with the change and that's going to happen right but then we got but there's a hundred that's it's 150 training clients in house. Yes. That's the totally big difference. Different. Is it tight? Yeah. The and number in this, and we were covers. making probably four or five times more per month than we were with even more clients. The business was the business. Correct. Was. And so then we were doing boot camps, and those, those grew huge. They got so big, uh, and so exciting. And we were outside in the parking lot. There was, you know, in the, that shopping center, there's, there's a big McDonald's there now. Right in the corner. But, yeah. But it wasn't there then. Yep. And we were on that pad and we were flipping tires and we had all, we had a blast. I mean, I was in there training with everybody. It was just a different time and energy was crazy and that music. And we just overnight, we transformed this thing. So we went from this one model to the model that we have today. Uh, basically in a matter of a month or two mm-hmm. and never looked back really 
Um, the place grew so fast, so big. Obviously, what, what we found out was this is what this market needs and wants. They want somebody to coach them. They don't want necessarily a gym they can go work out in on mm -hmm. their own. If they want that, they can go down to EOS or yeah. at the time it was Gold's for 15 yep. bucks or 20 bucks. So we, you know, and people would come in asking for that general access membership and I would send them there because I, I, I literally remember you like not, I don't want to say closing the door on people, but like explaining to them, like, that's if it. that's what you're looking for, totally get it. But that's not here. So that gym is right down the street. Take a right. You're going to end up on Ranger. Like yeah. literally like here, who does that nowadays? Like no, everybody would be like, no, that's, like, that's fine. Just, just give me some money. We'll yeah. figure out how the hell to make you happy. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you've got horrible Yelp reviews and Google reviews and. Right. And so so then so this is where it gets really accelerated. Right. So we're growing out of our space and I got to look for a new space. And this was um, gosh, what year? Two, 2014. So we, we, we ran that model hard from 10 to 14, um, grew it out. And we were basically blowing the you know, like we were literally blowing the doors off and the, the <laughs> restaurant closed next to us. And we were trying to take that space over, but they wouldn't let us because that's a restaurant. And by the way, that restaurant's been five different restaurants since we left. It's still holding on right now, right? No, that, that they just switched from again. Yeah, they've got a new one with a banner on it. <sighs> yeah, it's whatever. So they should have leased us mm -hmm. that space. They they hindsight for that we moved we moved into the current uh, facility we went from 3100 feet to 8000 feet i got to design it the way i wanted again coming from the the architectural construction background i, I really designed this place functional the way i wanted it if you walk into this gym if you walk into pulse fitness you're going to walk in and you're not going to understand that it's a gym because yeah. the gym's behind the walls and it looks like, uh, you know, we got our smoothie bar up front and then we got a lounge up there and we got our couple offices and it's just like you wouldn't know it. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you'd go around the corner and then it opens up and you got these, this huge gym back there. But uh, then this around 2015, I remember specifically in about uh, somewhere around June, um, I got I got Russell Brunson's book, uh, Dot Com Secrets, and I was reading it and I was like, you know what? This funnel game looks pretty cool. For up until then, it was post on Facebook as much as possible, direct mail, and definitely email, okay, to get clients, since we're talking about marketing now. And uh, you were actually had moved to, to Texas. Texas. Yeah, you mm -hmm. were working construction in uh, Texas with a buddy of yours, yeah. and you were out there, and you were doing good. And you called me one day, and you said, hey man, um, they shut the project down. Oh, we quit. They, you, yeah, they went to change our agreement. Um, our, yeah, because our company w uh, was, so, I mean, typical construction stuff, right? Like our company was out here. We, my buddy and I, it was a temporary project. So it was about 14 months front to back. So rather than us move full time to Texas, they, they agreed. They would just put us out there on the, the job. A rental, yeah. Yeah. And so we, we worked with them, set everything up, figured out, you know, the per diems, the living situation, what the pay was, what our responsibility. It was this big, long thing. Put everything together. We get out there, put our name on a lease. Not even three weeks later, a company comes back and says, we're way over budget. We haven't even ha like had time on the job yet. There was a previous uh, yeah. person that was running it. So, um, you know, they're like, well, we're, we're tight on funds. We need to renegotiate the contract in order to keep you guys here at all. Yeah. Um, they pulled like literally everything off of the plate. They basically were just going to pay us a salary. And uh, <clears throat> you had already moved up there. We had just exactly. I mean, literally, like uh, I've got a dog. You know, he was going to come out. Bjorn had a dog at the time. He was going to come out. We we put our name in a house. We've got a house now. Cable bills. I mean, literally just established ourselves as renting all of this. And they come to us and they're like, oh, well, that's that's cool. And on top of it, we were saving the company eight grand a month on what they technically owed us with per diems and stuff. We told them to wipe it, put it back in the project. So like, we did our due diligence saving the company money, too. And it wasn't good enough. We We find out that the guy who was running the project before us essentially went large. I mean, we had 318 units to do. Mm -hmm. He bought material for way too many units at once. So the material, the, we had the actual assets on the job. The money was already spent. They were forecasting for the rest of the build out, but they didn't. They weren't accounting for the, the material that was already on hand. Okay. So that's where the gap in, in funds were. Um, they, they gave us the option of, of staying on at, with just the salary. And for us, it wasn't, I mean, we literally took like a 50% pay cut overnight. Boom. Like just to be here, it was going to cost us mm -hmm. out insane amounts. And we're like, this isn't the agreement, not interested in doing on those terms. So we quit. 
we left. We came home. Came home jobless and homeless. Yeah. In literally like 48 hours time. Yeah, you were driving and home. And so, yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, it was a big undertaking. We had just started the ball, you know, the process for the rentals and all that stuff. So we had to start backing out of this stuff. And uh, so we get home. Yeah, uh, I came to you and I said, hey, uh, I know I would shaved the beard at the time. Yep. That was the joke. Uh, you had said, you know, hey, if you shave the beard, I'll give you a job. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you're like, all right. <laughs> uh, well, the, the beard was gone by this time. When I moved back, uh, I had gotten rid of the beard. Uh, so, yeah, I jokingly came to you and said, hey, so the beard's gone. What do you have for me? <laughs> yep. And, uh, yeah, it was just time. You, you, uh, you threw me at the front desk, said, hey, you know, like it's not much, but at least it's a few bucks coming in the door. Yeah. So I think a week's worth of time at the front desk yeah. before we uh, we had a, a conversation of what was happening in the yeah so the marketing world yeah so exactly so you were at the front desk you know <clears throat> answering calls scheduling people making smoothies doing the front desk concierge stuff and I'm in the front office where Zach is you is now and I'm up there and I'm like learning funnels and I'm they're working really <laughs> really, really, yeah. really well and I was running uh, like three week, you know, boot camp challenges and all kinds of cool stuff uh, through funnels. And I was doing for Pauls for for his gym, for, yeah, yeah, for Pauls. And I was like, man, um, let me, because I was in the STS at the time. I mm -hmm. had joined with Rick and, and Frank, and I had uh, I started telling everybody in that group on our Facebook group. It's like, hey guys, here's what I'm doing. Let me show you exactly what I'm doing, so you guys can do it too, because this is really cool stuff. And I started showing them, like I did some like, Zooms or something. Yeah. It was probably Skype at the time. So I was like, hey, guys, join Skype, and I'm going to show you because I'm teaching everybody how to do what I'm doing because I had no intentions of creating a company out of this. Mm -hmm. And Frank calls me after. He's like, hey, man, I'm not going to ever learn that. You just want to do that for me? I'm like, <laughs> he's like, how much do you charge? I was like, uh, how about I do it for free because I have no idea if it's going to work for you. Yeah. You spend the money, and I'll build the thing, and let's see what happens. And it wasn't even a couple hours after we launched and we're starting to get sales. Oh, uh, I remember it was like the first time I put um, Stripe on my phone and, and we were running all those campaigns. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> if you think it's cool making money while you sleep, <laughs> you should have been sitting in these offices when we had, you know, these guys run. Oh, man. So we started with Frank and then I d we did it. And I remember he got 1,600 leads and I think he made like 40 grand. You know, on the on the on the campaign, and he didn't pay me anything. Nothing. I think he spent five or six hundred dollars on Facebook, mm -hmm. made forty grand, and I was like, "Cool, I guess that worked." And he's like, "Let's do it again." Do it again. He goes, "Instead of spending five hundred, let's spend two thousand." I was like, "All right." So I did it again for free. We did it for him. I did it for Whitney. We did it for um, uh, Rod. Rod down Stewart. in Melbourne. Rod, yeah. And all mm. of a sudden, it, it hit me like. Everybody wants me to do this for them. I'm not really charging them, so let's like let's like come up with a price. Um, it, you weren't involved yet. You're right there on the edge. And I was like, hey, I think I'm going to need some help with this because there's a lot of people calling me and I can't do all these. Um, we're going to charge 500 bucks, and you know maybe I'll pay you uh, uh, like like let's get you out the front desk, and maybe I'll pay you like 30 grand or something. Let's just mm -hmm. let's just see where this thing goes. And you're like, cool, man, anything works. And that's right up your alley because you're, yeah. you know, I was like, so I taught you click funnels from what I knew. And then you went off and learned more about it. Mm -hmm. And you took some course. I think we bought you some yeah. courses. And overnight, like, and I'm not saying this just to say the word overnight. I'm saying overnight because literally the next day we got like 10 calls and then 20 calls. And then all of a sudden we're signing up people for five. I'll never bucks. for our first month. This when I stepped into it, when we like I, we, literally, if you guys ever come to the office, I'll show you where we sat down. We're like, okay, what are we going to call this? Like you were talking about pulse. Like we yeah. wrote down every idea. I mean, we, we it was six months. That was six months after this. You know what I mean? Yeah. That we even decided to like make something official of it. Well, we were doing it. We had more demand than we had this the was, ability to create the business. This you know was what I mean? June, July of 2015. Yeah. And we, we uh, the first month that we started running funnels for other people, we had 34 clients that month. 34, we yeah. 34 simultaneous clients in a matter of a month. Mm -hmm. And we didn't do any marketing, by the way. You guys, Not for was, ourselves. This was word of mouth. People mm -hmm. were calling us, hey, hey, will you do the thing? And we would do it and we would get them 80 clients. They're them 100 clients. And when we say clients, guys, what I mean is 
These are not leads. These are people actually put their credit card in online, paid for the camp, f- for the for the program at that gym. Yeah, some some form of a low barrier trial. Yeah, exactly. Typically, 90, well, like we were crushing with the ninety seven dollar price point on twenty one days. Yep. And fast forward nine months, we had generated a uh, million dollars, mm-hmm. and that's when we got our um, ClickFunnels Two Comma Club award the first time in nine months, and it was chaos so we had to hire Alyssa. Mm-hmm. we hired my dad we hired my like five of my cousins, <laughs> my, my yeah. cousins. we hired my sister um, everybody I brought everybody I knew that I could trust into this company at profit and we grew profit from nothing an idea for one guy for Frank Nash to at our peak we had 87 simultaneous campaigns going on and we changed our model where we were making 50% of every sale. Uh, the gyms didn't care. We did a really low upfront. We did like a membership. It was like 250 bucks a month and we were going to do five campaigns for you because we were banking on the sales. And the sales. We were yep. so confident what we were doing. We leveraged Infusionsoft. We leveraged abandoned cart campaigns and automation even in the 2015 guys three hundred thousand dollars of that million dollars happened through automation five years ago yeah listen if you're not coming to that workshop that's coming up yes imagine where you're gonna be in five years yeah 300 grand of a million dollars yep came from from automation from automation is it from the abandoned cart and that was think that of was, how much money you're leaving on the table that was before text message automation that was just email just now. email so no voicemail broadcast. Nothing. It was just at the bare bones. Yep. We were running campaigns. So we created this amazing company that were me and you were doing all the sales. You were doing a lot of the funnels. I was doing some of the funnels. I was doing a lot of the ads. And we had this team in place where we were just bank. We, 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 we were able to do 87 Facebook campaigns, funnel, like individual funnels, all within like a 30 day time crunch. It, yeah. And we would market it and it would just be like our phones. I could I have these notifications from uh, Infusionsoft every sale. It was scroll, scroll, oh, yeah. scroll. And at, then, w- at one point, I it would take me. I was in the seat in charge of launching the Facebook campaigns, yeah. and then we, our team would obviously monitor everything. But I would get them up and running, and and uh, it would take me a full week's time to get so like sun up to sundown just to get our our entire launch done for our clients like yep. it was a ton because they were all you were like when we when we say our launch we were doing like a summer campaign mm-hmm. a january campaign spring and we would all they would all do the same campaign yeah so they'd start at one of pretty much one of three weeks you and, know and we one. would try to stagger them as best we could oh. <laughs> and we were you know and that then i was like zach you're 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 promoted <laughs> yeah. you're promoted there was another guy in that seat up there brent moore amazing in fact i want to have brent on this yeah. show yeah. when he gets in town brent moore was our fitness director <laughs> He actually got called by the Pentagon to go do some. Mil- he came out of military world, so he got a government job. But uh, Zach, now that I had a, uh, a, a vacancy, I said, Zach, you, well, I interviewed. Well, like, yeah. Well, at the time, I mean, I was gonna say you had you had two candidates, and on paper, we like we we've, we've gone back to this. Like Mike was probably the leading candidate if you took the forty thousand foot view, just from the interactions with the clients. The, the per- like he looked more hungry for the position. Yeah. But then, as we figured out. Zach has the the eye for business, not just an exceptional training. Yes, and so that's obviously why the right person ended up in the right seat. Yeah, and then you know Mike's no longer here. Sure. So so Zach was up at the front, and then that's when I moved into this office back in the back, and it was <laughs> we were working out of my house. It was it was a lot of fun. I think it I was, went through three max in like we were blown the first through, six months. We were blown through <laughs> max. We Bur- still <laughs> we're still going through that struggle. I remember working out of um, the home office, mm-hmm. facing each other, and we were like, "Okay, uh, yeah, I'll sit s- at the desk. I'll, 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 I'll airdrop you the the image for that one." He would send me something back, and then we had the board, and we had this map oh, on the man. wall with all the all pins, the clients, yeah, all the pins in the wall. And this is funny. We're talking about like the startup story. If you go back to like the Amazon, you see that picture of. Uh, Jeff Bezos in the garage or yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like that. I feel like that's how we were because we were just sitting on top of each other pretty much just pounding we were the Arian was bringing us food we didn't ha- we were just head down in the laptop all day just I remember specifically out. all right she's cooking dinner we we hit launch on the campaign and back then you would get approved pretty damn quick yeah it was, it was like yeah and I, we were in the middle of dinner the first sales would start coming in from the campaign we just launched just before dinner I mean it was a different world Elmira New York what? New York Sport and Fitness. New York Sport and Fitness. Uh, Heather, if you're listening, Heather, Heather Mayo. Mayo. 
and, and, and you get Heather, you know, you are still our top performing campaign we've ever run in, in the, the history of ProFit. Uh, yeah, uh, as far as the low barrier. Yeah, the, the low barrier campaign. And to this day, neither me or Randy can figure out why you never ran another one with us. <laughs> we the, can't. Well, the, probably because they couldn't take it. I mean, wait, let's we want the hard numbers? Let's do the hard numbers. Uh, so in a matter of three weeks, mm -hmm. we had 220 sales at, at $97, $97 a piece. Plus, let's call it 1,000 leads. So many clients came into us. Like, who, who, who? We shut it down early. We had to. They they called us and they said we we planned for a three week marketing campaign. I don't think we crossed past two before we had to pull the plug. Okay, so a hundred sales per week mm -hmm. about. How many people can really take on a hundred clients, much less two hundred and twenty clients, all starting on the same day? And you know the best part? You know what our ad spend recommended at the time was? What was that? Four hundred bucks. Oh god. We would have spent. We would have spent four hundred dollars over three weeks to acquire two hundred and twenty paid participants. So what's that, what's that ROI? What did they make? So they get 200, what do we say, 220? 220 clients, so that's $22,000. 22000 in two in just over two weeks. And then plus all the conversions. At a $400 ad spend. Yeah, mind-blowing. This is why. And then, Heather, you never ran another one. <laughs> we we, we spoke. We, I spoke to her um, after that once. They were looking for more of that, but it was, it was recently. Yeah, they wanted that. Somewhat recent. They wanted those results months, like a year or like, two later. Yeah, it's like it doesn't work that way. So, <laughs> so what's really cool and the thing to take away maybe from this is that you take the opportunities when you can. You just take it because you run as hard as you can. Because I, I saw the opportunity was there, and we just went for it. And you know, we were in the deep in the game. Uh, we joined Russell Brunson's inner circle. Yep. I got to know him really well. You got to know him well. We took all his trainings. We went to the meetings, and we, we grew the business even further from there. We paid for other coaches. The Todd Brown. Like, he, here's the thing, guys. Cause we're in the digital marketing realm, just like you're in the fitness realm. You have options on how where to look to grow your business. We had opportunity. We could have gone to – we could have just stuck with ClickFunnels. We could have used something other than Infusionsoft. We could have gone a million different avenues. But we saw the areas we needed to grow to make what we were doing better – and it was copywriting. Mm -hmm. We brought your sister. Positioning. In. Yeah, exactly. Who was a, a phenomenal copywriter. Brought her on. We. And by the way, I don't know if you, I think you know this, that my sister, her first job out of college, went to U of A, was working for Disney, writing the trailers for the movies. Oh, and I didn't know that's what, yeah. what she was doing for she was writing, That's awesome. She was writing the one man <laughs> on a mission. <laughs> you know awesome. that voiceover? Yep. Who was the comedian that does it? Pablo Francisco that yeah, does the comedian? Yeah. yeah. Little, little Tortilla oh, Boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she was writing the scripts for that. That's awesome. So she was a great copy. But she, I mean, she's worked for amazing companies. Disney, I think Microsoft, Toyota. Like, there's some big, big brands that yeah. she's she's had her hand in. And uh, so we brought her on board. We we hired Todd. We went out to Florida. We met with Todd Brown. Yep. Um, well, learned under his, his the methods that he was teaching when it came to acquiring clients, the conversation, yep. um, his E5, his camp method. I still have all of his materials. It's in all of our belief systems. And yep. when we, we, we took it right back the yeah, next man. day, yep. we went right back to our business. We changed some of the verbiage, some of the language. So the, the takeaways, you know, went to Thomas originally. Yeah. I went to Thomas originally and got the first consultant, and I, and I found sought, sought help. Uh, obviously, that was a bad decision. Uh, found Rick, changed the model. That was a great decision. Found Russell, did did all of his stuff. Found Todd, bought all of his stuff, and and then we keep building and growing and changing it. So mm -hmm. like the model that Rick was running, we started that way, but we've we've totally changed it since then and made it our own. Yeah, it's adapted and evolved and it in in unique. You know what I mean? Like yep. some of this is unique to you guys. It's not, it, there are things that you could change that mm -hmm. changes the experience to, to your demographic. So it's yours. Yep. Yep. And so, th so with them, yeah, we, we met Todd. He spoke at a, the funnel live uh, event mm -hmm. and we went to that and I said, Todd, you're the guy I've been looking for. Shauna, you're the Shauna, girl I'm yep. look, I've been looking for. And I hired these people, not, not small money. You know, uh, Russell was 25 grand. Todd was 12 grand. Shauna was several grand, like, you know, 10 mm -hmm. grand, 12 grand. Uh, and it's just what we, we f see the value and we take action. And that's why we are able to be 
uh, where we're at today. So, so keep keep going on the on the you know we're doing funnels. The, they're starting to slowly dec- decline in the in the way that they're performing. Does the, mm-hmm. the four hundred dollar ad spend to generate twenty two thousand dollars on the front end doesn't exist anymore? Not for that. No. Um, yeah. So well, just to speak to that. So a couple things people ask us all the time. Like I get calls every week for people that are looking for lead generation outsourced. They want somebody else to go do the job for them. Essentially, what we were doing at that time. And the reason that that service doesn't work as, as the sole you know, thing that we were doing anymore is the fact that, guys, you all know how competitive Facebook is f- for the fitness industry now. Mm-hmm. You could just, I mean, just every one of your competitors is running the same style of campaign, the same low barrier offers, or these, this has become the norm. Not only that, but the cost per impression on Facebook has gone up roughly 25% per quarter since they introduced the advertising platform. So just to step on the field to play the game, 25% increase quarterly over the last f- almost five years. Yep, yep. So imagine that. Like They're just, squeezing it. I mean, yeah. We, yeah, that $400 ad spend is now how many times? Probably 20 eight, eight, some, yeah. eight times eight times more because if it was uh, every, every year is 100%. 100%. Over so it's yeah. four or five years. It's five 500%. times. Yeah. Sure. So yeah, that's part of the reason why, you know, wh- when I take a call with a, a, a gym owner that we worked with a year and a half ago, two years ago, and they're like, hey, c- can we go run those campaigns? And we said, no, not, not that you're going to be happy with, not b- to the same way that you're experienced, because that, that cycle, that trend has kind of come and gone. You know, we, we expressed it 50 episodes ago with the, the six-week challenge. That was something that is a that's the hook. That's the offer. That's the shiny ball syndrome. The, the more we can get you guys to look at the bigger picture, the, the, the operations around that, the more you'll understand that this is going to come and go. But the systems and the, the structure that you have for the business, that's where the, the true growth is going to happen. You have to you have to pay attention and be able to run those things. Yep. But you can't put all your eggs in the basket and expect that to be the answer for continued growth right and i would agree to that and what we started doing probably about 18 months ago was like we started slowly phasing the funnels out we were doing facebook ads we've we phased that out and in the really the decision there's two reasons why we decided to get out of facebook advertising as a service Uh, we still use it by the way for all of our stuff but we don't do it for clients anymore for two reasons number one we've worked with a lot of gyms Mm -hmm. a lot and we can get you all the leads that your little heart desires. But if we did that for you a year ago and we come back one year later, you're in the same exact place that you were a year ago, still struggling, still looking for more leads. We figured out really quickly, this isn't solving the problem. Yeah, the lead, it, and it was hard because that's, I mean. this Because exactly, if we wanted to stay in the game, we would have as many clients as we'd ever, mm-hmm. our, our, our little hearts would desire, but we don't believe in that is the reason to that you're going to succeed that was one reason the other reason was we were really damn good at it like yeah really freaking good at facebook ads but with every you know 20 year old in their basement taking a facebook course now becomes our competition the the end user and this might go back to what you're offering at your gym thinks we're the same yes so Tim, you're, you're charging two grand. This guy's going to charge me five hundred grand, five five hundred dollars. Well, you're you're not. We're not the same, brother. We're not the same. We're we're a lot better, but we couldn't explain that enough. Yeah. And we didn't want to compete with guys that are charging five hundred five hundred bucks. Uh, and it's just like your gym. Like if you're the same thing to the end user, they're going to go to the cheaper place. So if you offer fitness and they offer fitness, and that's it. They're going to go to the $9 club over your $300 club. So we're like, you know what? We're not that anymore. Yeah. So we we take those calls and we push them off to other people. Uh, and those were the two main reasons. We don't want to compete with the 20-year-old that doesn't know anything because you guys think we're the same as them because we're not. No. Uh, but we also d- didn't believe that this was going to help gym owners win. And that's the biggest thing. And that's what I meant by it's, it was difficult because, like you said, we, we, could t- we could absolutely still have that offering and still do that service but the it, the hard pill to swallow is the fact that like just because we can we can sell it to you guys doesn't mean it's the right decision for you and for us to not have that service 
and not guide, guide you down that path. I mean, there's always going to be people that need that, and that's okay. There are people that provide that for you. We believe our the value that we bring to the table is better spent teaching you guys true systems for growth, the stuff that's going to take you the, mm-hmm. the length, the stuff that's going to take your business to a million-dollar business, not what's going to work for the next month or two months. Right. So we made this big transition. We got rid of the Facebook ads as a service. We went into coaching hard and we started with Jeff Larish and, yeah. and you know transformed his business and we looked at each other like this is it. This mm-hmm. is what we should be doing because look how great he is doing because of what we told him to do. Yeah. Now, you know, one of the things I would say that I'm really good at is is I can identify the problem really quick. And a lot of times when you're in your gym, you're in there every day, you don't understand because you see it every day. Or it's like, I've always been doing it this way. I can see it, I can talk to you for an hour and I can find the problems really quick. When was the last time anybody had just a fresh set of eyes to look at their business? Right. Like uh, there's processes in ours that w- are probably lacking because it's, nobody just calls somebody and says, hey, you know, can you just do a checkup on my business? Make sure that like, right. l- uh, do I need a supplement somewhere in here? Like. <laughs> You know so, what I mean? So we decided, like, let's let's be honest with ourselves. What we're doing, yeah, we, we're turning away business all the time for Facebook ads. We don't want to do them. We can't, we're not going to do them. Uh, but we looked at ourselves like this is, this is the solution. The coaching is the solution. The automation is the solution that you need. That's what we've identified. It's not a lead problem. It's a business systems problem. That's why our coaching is so popular. That's why our automation, automation course yeah. is so popular. And if that's all we ever did, I am very confident that we can s- save a lot of businesses and help people win. And that's really where our passion's at. Let's do this. Yeah, and that's exactly it. it it's financial freedom and time freedom. Like you for get the, in, for the end user. Yeah, for exactly. Yeah, I mean, just getting into business like that. You own a business. You own a business because you want to have something that's yours. You don't have to answer to somebody else. But the the benefit of regardless of your job or whatever it may be is. You, the accumulation of wealth leads to the ability to buy shit you want mm-hmm. and the ability to spend your time wherever the hell you want. Like, if that's not your goal, don't buy the business. <laughs> Be an employee. Yep. You get your, you know, all the rest of your time outside of your job. But right. for those that want more, the the t- time and financial freedom, this is the system that we, that, that's where our passions are. That's where yep. we want to help people, you know, accelerate towards. Yep. And that's, that's, and that's one of the biggest pieces, and I'm not good at this, is the mindset. And that's what you do now, Randy, is you teach the mindset of how to structure your day, how to cut the negativity out, how to focus on the, you know, the, the positives and the affirmations and all that stuff. And it works as, as, as kooky as it is in my <laughs> head. I start practicing a little bit of this. I don't do like I don't go deep to into the, the depths yeah, to, sure. the, to the meditation side mm-hmm. and stuff. But every morning I've got that little app on my phone and I'll, I'll hit the thing, my message for the day and I'll. I'll read it, I'll think it, and I'll say it, and then, like, it's crazy. The shit comes true. It's just this well, weird I thing. Well, I mean, like, here's the thing. Like, when it comes to mindset and it comes to personal growth and, you know, there is the the far end of the, the woo-woo, you know, spiritual yeah. side, and, and there are avenues, or there, there are those people that take it that distance, and that's perfectly fine. Um, the thing that really interested me and, and it got me into motion more so into mindset and personal growth is the other end of the spectrum. The business users, the CEOs at and the executives at Google, um, you know, reading uh, Stealing Fire, mm-hmm. you know, um, it's a great book, talks about the flow state, how to tap into that, how to utilize, like that's the creative juices that flow, that were ideas and inspirations that's and my, change. That your, was your business Starbucks. plan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're like when you, when you sit down and you, you come out of it at the end, you're like, what, what the hell just happened? happened? You know, <laughs> and you have this amazing thing. And you're like, oh my yeah, gosh, it's done. Yeah, yeah, it's it's easy to relate to sports. You know, like you see Sean White do a perfect run. And you're like, that that looked fluid. It looked effortless. It looked it and, and yeah. for him, he goes, I don't even know what the hell I just did. Like I just went out and did what I was supposed right. to do, and the subconscious takes over, and boom, there you go. The numbers on the board are a reflection. Um, that book talks about how our Navy SEALs, how the executives at, at Google how your average person, I mean, all of these people can tap into something like the flow state, which is a... Per, a, a subconscious. Yeah, it, exactly. It's, it's an, uh, a physical response of the body where your subconscious takes more control than your conscious and you're not actively thinking about what you need to do next. You just do, do it, it because yeah. you're, you're programmed. Yep. And that's what it is, it's programming. And so, um, you know, like your reticular activating device. It's a, it's a phenomenon in your brain where, like, let's say you're going to look at a car, look to purchase a vehicle. 
the next day, everybody's driving that freaking vehicle. Everybody didn't buy that vehicle in the last 24 hours. You've now raised your awareness. Yeah. So now you're, you're conscious of something different. Sure. This is like these phenomenons that happen have always really interested me because it's those that, that you see the phenomenon, realize the benefit of it, and then can apply it in life that creates change and growth. And so that's always in, interested me. Mm -hmm. um, the more people I've surrounded myself with, in that successful individuals, the more I find out that daily routine is crucial, mm -hmm. that the stimuli that you're putting in your brain is crucial. The most successful people I know do not watch the news. They could care freaking less mm -hmm. about what's happening with you know, the coronavirus right now, unless it's impacting their business um, or you know, positioning. Um, or you know the politics or what Bernie said at the last debate or like yeah. none of that matters like let's look at the me economy not the economy let's look at my life and the things I need to change and cut out the bullshit the yeah. fluff and that's what you're helping these gym, and that's exactly exactly do. it it's in in above all else I'd say the number one thing that if we can help gym owner and this is everybody it's it's a little bit more discipline and taking action because you, you said it earlier and I loved it. If you're gonna fail, fail fast. Oh yeah. Most people, they, they don't even have the opportunity to fail because they never take action towards winning or failing, or, or you know, fa success or failure. You never even They're get to the point. To you're, exactly, you're, yeah. you're, 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 it's paralysis by analysis. You're stuck here, you're, you're, you're okay being comfortable and complacent because this doesn't suck. Yeah, the average. The average, you know, and we're gonna get into that in future episodes here, right? But in order to do more and want more, or in order to, to, to have more, you need to do more. And that's scary, you know? What if, what if it doesn't happen? What if it doesn't work out? What if, well, what if it does? <laughs> right, right. Like how often, like literally, if instead of every single time you had an irrational fear telling you not to move into, into action, you had an affirmation that told you you're capable of doing so, what is your programming gonna do for, or what is your, your subconscious programming gonna do for you. There's a power behind affirmations. There's a power behind structure. There's a power behind meditation. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just controlling what comes into your mind. I'm a big fan of Dr. Joe Dispenza. Dr. Joe Dispenza, he runs workshops, he does retreats, he does, he's a, a speaker, he's written a number of books, phenomenal. What he is studying is how your thoughts and your emotional state affects you at a a, a cellular level. Okay, yeah. And you so now, about that. yeah. So now he's he's showing with scientific evidence that we are the product of our thoughts and our beliefs. The your body at a cellular level does not know the difference between running a race, raising your hand, feeling the win, you know, winning a race or winning an event, like yep. actually putting yourself in the, the situation where you just did it and you're winning. Now you're taking in all of the, the emotion of, of that actual win versus being able to close your eyes, visualize that win, apply the emotion to the level. Like literally you should have tears coming to your eyes if you visualize it yep. well enough. Your cells are going to react to the same way. It's pretty cool. It's phenomenal. But again, it comes back to taking something that might seem a little bit you know beyond or something like that but making it usable in a daily step with action that's going to make move the needle so it's the same thing that when we look at our business this needs to change because what you're doing isn't working we do the same thing with the mind you're on a path of this it's because your your results are this 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 and this let's change the way you're looking at the situation let's look at it with a fresh set of eyes start doing this 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 and this and then look at the results hunter would be the, a great you know, individual, yeah. one yeah. of our other clients who who's who really grasped that and was able to really just crush throughout the coaching program. Yeah. So it's all built in there. So it's it all, is. you know, because that, that's that's not something you're going to get off the shelf per se unless you go out and seek it. But we built it into our coaching program because it's that important. That's why it's the first thing we talk about. Actually, in the coaching program, we do the decade in a day with me and then they go right into mindset with you. And I talk to our clients every week. Yep. I make sure I'm there as their accountability coach, <clears throat> as their sounding board, you know, like it's it's sometimes, you know, you talk about the business and the structure of the business and things like that. And we have a game plan for what they need to do in their business. Mm -hmm. But what happens, you know, 24 hours, 48 hours when they're stuck. yeah, you know, they they're or they're in their business and they're like, you know what, I'm trying to work on this, but I can't break away because, 
you know, somebody's coming into my office and doing this stuff. And so, yeah. you know, we teach structuring your day. So helps you, yeah. So that's that's the, the, the other thing that we're doing is, yeah, helping you get the stuff done. Exactly. Like, we can put you like like you said before the podcast was like everything you need is on Google. Yeah. But right. if somebody isn't holding you accountable, uh, you know, just like your clients that, you know, all the nutrition advice and all the training advice can be found on YouTube. But they're not doing it for a reason. It's because they're not being held accountable. And that's the that's the one thing that kind of cracks me up consistently about the the seats that we're in is w every person that we talk to is a coach. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're a coach. When are you going to start treating your business like you 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 expect your clients to treat their training? Like if you looked at your business with the same you know uh, uh, lens, lens yeah, that lens. that your clients are looking at the the advice and the training and the the results that they're looking for, you need. Who do, who do they get the results from? The coach. You in business, I don't care how successful you are, you need a coach. If you don't have a coach, you're leaving results on the table, period. Period. I mean, f I, like, look at them. Finan like, it's athletes, top-level athletes. They all have coaches. They have a performance coach. Mindset. They have a mindset coach. Financial. They have a financial coach. They have a, a, a social media coach. There's yeah, rules PR, about, PR, yeah, PR. PR I mean, PR coach. So what we're trying to tell you guys is uh, – Hire us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, how we got so deep into that yeah. one, but 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 uh, I mean, great. You know, that's our story, right? And, and that was one of the things that our podcast coaches mentioned, <laughs> yeah. mentioned to us. If we're talking about coaches, we asked, you know, you know, like we don't, we've never done podcasting. I mean, we're a hundred episodes deep. We could probably, we kind of know what we're doing now, but we're still, we don't know. We right? want to be. We it's, it's it's the truth. We want to turn around and deliver greater result to you. How can we help you the greatest? And our coaches mentioned, you got to tell your story, guys. You, the people need to, to know how this all came to be, not just where you're at today. And hopefully this episode gave you a little inside, a little snapshot of, of our lives and, and, you know, how we got all of a sudden to this, you know, podcast studio. And now you're hearing us in, in the car right now. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and hopefully that, that helps you guys. Hopefully... Uh, you, you took something from it. Obviously, there was a little couple nuggets of lessons in there, but really it was about the story and the journey. And, um, you know, we wanted to just tell you. We want to tell you it wasn't just this one day. It was a lot of crap in between, just like what you're going through right now. So mm -hmm. there you have it. There you have it. There you go. All right, guys. Great episode. Hopefully you take a lot from this. We'd love a, love a review. Whatever you thought, just, just ping us. Ping us uh, you know, on Facebook, email, whatever. Um, if you're, you're interested in getting on a call, if you want to take this to the next level and you're ready to, to see what, you know, what the future holds for you and your business in 2020 and beyond, jump on a call, pfmarketingsolutions.com slash call. That will be with Randy. Mm -hmm. and we'll, uh, there's a little form we have you fill out. Jump on a call. Now that you know what we do and what we don't do, is, you know, hopefully – you're not looking for Facebook ads, but uh, we can yeah, point yeah. you in the right direction <laughs> if we need to. Um, one thing I do want to mention, too, this is something that Tim and I have been working on. I, I really want to drive home the fact that, like, we are in – we're in this seat. We're in our coaching seat. Ultimately, we are here to help you guys. That's why we do what we do. With our coaching program, we've, we've talked about pricing. We've talked about, you know, it, it's not that – we're not the cheapest one out there. We have – we're working with a third-party funder to help more people step into that realm. So it, it, if you're – take action, guys. Like, get on a call. Like, if you're, if you're curious at all, just pick up the phone. Let's have a conversation. I'm not going to hard sell you on something that you're not – because guess what? The day after you sign up, guess who gets to fulfill it? Me, That's us. us. <laughs> yeah. It's not like we don't run this big, giant sales organization or – And pass you off to you – know, Exactly, right? It's not easy to get on the phone like, hey, cool, I got my commission check, which I don't, um, and then toss you to somebody who you have to go – you know, to go fulfill it. We are the people that you get to work with. We, you're going to start the process with us. We're going to finish the process with us, but we're yeah. here to help. So good point. Good point. Well, cool. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, hopefully you're, you're having a great day and uh, you know what? It's time to take action. If you want this business to be what you want it to be and it's not where you want it now, jump on a call. PFMarketingSolutions.com slash call. Get on with Randy. Until next episode, guys, keep changing lives. We'll see you on the next show. Bye.